What is up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video showing you some of the things that I brought as a carry-on and also tech-wise to LA. So I went to this trip at the beginning of the month, and long story short, some of the items in this episode got stolen, so I had to take some time to get that all back. And here we are, so nothing's going to stop us, but today I've got a video just talking about the things I bring as a carry-on because each trip is different and I think a lot of you guys want to see this kind of a lifestyle sort of video. This video is going to talk about just the things that I carried with me, which was the backpack and also a duffel bag. So I did send another luggage on the plane with all my camera gear because I was filming some iPhone 10 stuff. But here I've got the Peak Design backpack, which is very handy for camera gear, and also a Louis Vuitton 55 Keepall duffel bag, which is for clothes. I'm also gonna be buying a couple Anchor battery packs for you guys, which I think is the most important piece that I take with me when I travel or whenever I just leave the house in general. So all you have to do to enter is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, leave a comment down below as to what your favorite piece of anything in this episode is, and also drop a like on this video, and I'll be announcing a winner when this video hits 1500 likes. So to give you guys a black story, I was go black story. I'm going to LA with Intel for ComplexCon to see their exhibition of AR and VR. They sponsored me on this trip and I actually had a really good time there. Just a quick weekend trip and I actually landed back in class, like literally as class started because I missed a connection flight. The day that I flew out was the day the iPhone 10 came out. So I literally picked this up from the UPS facility, drove to the airport, did my unboxing in the car, filmed on my iPhone and edited on my MacBook Pro 13 inch on the plane. So it was definitely a really hectic weekend and if you're a tech YouTuber, I definitely don't recommend traveling on release day. But overall, it was a really successful trip and I think it was a great time just to be in LA once again. You guys probably know that even though I'm in the tech industry, I really enjoy streetwear and just clothing, shoes and stuff like that. So ComplexCon was literally the perfect event because I had a mixture of tech and also streetwear as well. So I just felt super at home there. In total on this trip, I brought the iPhone 8 Plus. I also brought the Google Pixel 2 XL because I was reviewing it and it also has nice Google case on it. And lastly, I also had the iPhone 10, which I unboxed at the airport and started using on the trip, but also filmed some footage for it. So now I'm using the iPhone 10 as my daily driver, but at the time I was using the iPhone 8 Plus and those were the phones that I brought with me for the trip. One of the services that I use when booking travel or traveling abroad is TunnelBear VPN. And there's a number of reasons or uses as to why this program works so well. For example, a lot of times when you're booking travel on travel sites, the company's website will actually adapt the price based on what country you're browsing from and whether or not it thinks you're desperate to book your flight ticket. I personally notice that a lot, especially because I book all of my trips online. Additionally, if you're out and about, for example, in some random cafe in LA that you've never heard about, you don't know whether or not the network is safe and whether your information is being snatched, including passwords and personal info. TunnelBear essentially hides your IP address and allows you to essentially browse from a long list of countries around the world. There's an app for iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and Chrome, and you can use up to five devices per account. You can try TunnelBear for free when you visit tunnelbear.com slash Justin, and I'll leave a link down below. So like I mentioned, this is the Peak Design 20L backpack. And the reason why I like this so much is because it is very durable, it is good in size, and it can store a lot of things, but it's also super easy to grab things in and out because before I used to just use a standard Herschel bag and it was hard to get camera gear around. So here's just the top compartment where you can lift the latch there. And the first thing that I brought and probably used the most on the trip was the Canon 6D. So the Canon 6D Mark II was the camera I decided to pick up for photos and I really liked it. I just think Canon does a great job in terms of photos. It is full frame and the reason why I got this instead of the 5D is because it has a flip out screen and also a touch screen and the autofocus is super fast. The camera I'm using right now for filming videos and for most videos is a Panasonic GH5 and I have an adapter for that for Canon lenses. So I just use the Canon lenses as well on my Canon 6D. This camera takes some great photos as you can see here. I'm still trying to learn how to use it even better, but I just really like to stick with Canon for photos. So this is what I decided to bring and use the most. The lens by the way is a Sigma 24 to 35 F2, which is very versatile and it's great that it works with full frame and also MFT and crop because the 18 to 35 that I had before did not work with full frame. The camera that I'm recording this video on right now is a Panasonic GH5 with a 12 to 24 Sigma lens on it and that is great for wide angle. And I think in terms of video quality and just for YouTubers, this is the best camera you can get when it comes to versatile video recording. Another thing that I brought with a gear bag was the Vrode VideoMic Pro Plus and this microphone is just very versatile. All of the vloggers use it and I did use it a bit when I recorded the in and out scene of my iPhone X first impressions. 
So this mic just kind of goes in the bag. It can recharge via micro USB, but was super handy when it just need to record audio in general. Moving on, the next tripod that I brought with me was this mini tripod from Manfrotto. And this was really good because if you want to just record on your phone and have the phone clip, then this is super handy just to put in your car. So when I was recording the iPhone 10 unboxing, the setup was kind of a pain, but this definitely came in clutch in terms of putting my phone in the car. For its price, it's definitely worth it and super versatile. And I just think everyone should have one of these, whether you're using your camera or your smartphone. Moving on, we do have my favorite pair of airplane headphones, and this is the older generation of the Bose QC20. And what's great about this is that it is active noise canceling. So when I'm on a flight and don't really wanna hear any of the humming or buzzing from the plane, this is able to block out sound very nicely. And the sound quality isn't the best, but if I'm just watching movies and wanna hear what everyone's saying, then this is a great pair of headphones and I've used them for about a year and a half now. Of course, Apple did remove the headphone jack, so I always have to just cross my fingers and hope that I did remember my adapter on the flight, otherwise I'm fucked. The next thing that I got here is the Anchor PowerCore 2 10,000 mAh battery pack, and this is what I like to take in my carry-on bag, but I do also have the 20,000 in my travel bag. This allows me to just keep all of my tech charged when I'm in the airport, so whether it's my iPhones or the iPad Pro, this is able to just get me through the day, and in general, this is the one that I use the most because it is super small, but still has enough capacity. It has one USB port, a battery indicator, and also a micro USB for charging it, so this is great to have. Since I was in LA, I did have to bring a set of shades, but I didn't end up wearing these because it actually wasn't that sunny when I was in LA, but these are the Ray-Ban Clubmasters. They look like this. I don't think I look that good with sunglasses, but I kind of like them because they're light. And fun fact, I actually lost a pair of these in an Uber when I went to LA in May. So I was pretty careful about these and these stayed in my bag for the entire trip. When it came to the computer that I brought, I brought the MacBook Pro 13 inch with touch bar, the base model from 2017. And it was because I really just had to do some school homework. I wasn't really planning to video edit or anything. So I didn't have to take my 15 inch MacBook Pro, which is heavier. The reason why I like this computer so much is that for school, it is very versatile and performance wise, it has been just what I needed, even though it is the base model. And I was actually able to edit part of my iPhone 10 first impressions and unboxing directly on this MacBook. And it did perfectly fine, even with 4K footage. I also brought my iPad Pro 10.5 and what I use this for is just to watch some movies on it, have some Netflix downloaded offline. And the TV show that I started watching on the plane was Stranger Things, but I know a lot of you guys are gonna hate me for saying this. I didn't actually like it that much because it just wasn't my taste. Mental. Another product that I was also wearing on the trip was a Nokia Steel Activity Watch. So this watch is really cool in the fact that it looks like a normal minimalist watch. And I'm personally not the biggest fan of watches, but I think this is just so light and minimal that I can stand it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all the links to purchase down below, and I would like to thank them for sponsoring this video. It is essentially a 24 seven activity tracker that looks very beautiful and utilitarian. And you can also switch to watch bands as well, but it doesn't actually have to be charged and the battery life of the battery inside it is eight months. You can literally wear it anytime and anywhere and it just fits very seamlessly into your life as I've noticed. It connects to the Nokia HealthMate app and from there you're able to track not only steps, but it can also log activities such as running, swimming, calories burned and also distance, but it can also track sleep as well. The watch itself can also learn and detect up to 10 activities. They also make a body cardio smart skill that syncs within the same app as well and it just overall has a nice experience in terms of continuity. So now we're going to go ahead and look at what I brought in my duffel bag in terms of clothing because I think a lot of you guys mentioned that you want me to do more clothing related stuff on the channel as well. So let's just go ahead and open this up and I'm also going to show you some of the shoes that I brought with me on this trip as well. Just some basic tees and stuff. I did bring some H&M tees. These are kind of my go-to tees. I mean, they're like $9 each. So I kind of bought like 10 of them just to wear one for each day. And the ones that I like to wear are the V-necks because I'm able to wear them under hoodies and they don't show. So nothing too special about that. That is the H&M tee, which is pretty comfortable. And of course, my go-to hoodie for this trip is one that you've seen me wear many times and that is the Champion Gray sweatshirt. The reason why I like Champion is that it fits pretty nicely and it is very comfortable as well, which is something that is very important for hoodies, but it just has the Champion logo on this side, but I do wear this hoodie a lot. It is sort of my go-to. And for those who are wondering, I'm about five foot six. I'm not that fat or skinny either. 
and I'm a size medium and I think it fits perfectly. So that is the champion hoodie. On top of that, the jacket that I recently picked up from the friend who sells me sneakers, it was used, but it is the Supreme TNF jacket. I believe it was from last year. And this just has like the cool logo on the back. It was a North Face collab and it has a Supreme print on the front. I kind of just like to buy one jacket and wear it as a go-to. And I think this one was a good choice because it isn't too thick, but I can also sort of wear it as a rain jacket as it has been raining quite a bit where I live. So this is a Supreme TNF jacket and I believe it is a size medium as well. And I have really loved it. So. It was a bit overpriced, but I do wear my jackets a lot during the winter months, so I thought it was a good ad and it goes very well with my gray hoodie. When I was in LA, it wasn't actually that hot, so this was my outfit for the entire trip, and I kind of just swapped out the other hoodies as well, just to not wear the same hoodie every day. I had a gray Uvic hoodie, which got stolen and I haven't replaced, and also just gray Gildan. So in general, I just buy a lot of gray things because they're easy to wash, and just very simple and low-key, and I kind of like that. So. Gray hoodies are my go-to. As for pants, I can't really show you because I am wearing them right now. And these are the published pants that kind of have that polyester finish. And I like that, it's just kind of durable. And when you wash it, it doesn't fade as much as the normal pants do for joggers. I do just really like to wear tapered pants and joggers. So these have been my go-to pants and they're from published. So for this trip, I brought three pairs of shoes and the one that I wore the most was the High Snow Body Ultra Boost. So these are a simple pair of Ultra Boost, the 1.0s, which I think are the most comfortable. And for those who are wondering, I went true to size on this. So I'm normally an 8.5 and 8.5 in the High Snow Bodies fits perfectly. And I do also remove the insole of my shoes. I just think it's more comfortable that way, but these are the High Snow Body Ultra Boost, just goes by the gray color scheme and is super comfortable. The next pair of shoes that I brought were the Yeezy V2 Zebras and these are very beat up. I literally wore these for the entire summer and I also wore them hiking once. So they're completely beat, um, but I think they look pretty good. I thought they were pretty ugly at first, but these are the Yeezy V2s and I went with a size nine for this, even though I'm normally an 8.5. And once again, without the insoles, it is very comfortable. But since I was at ComplexCon, which is literally like a hype beast convention, I decided not to wear these because I assumed that a million other people would as well. The last pair of shoes that I brought was a pair of Uncage Ultra Boost. And these I would say are sort of beater shoes for workout or hiking. Because when I was in LA in May, I didn't know that I was gonna go hiking for Hollywood Hills. And I had to wear my Zebra Yeezys because I didn't really have anything else with me and they got so beat up. So I decided that in case I do go hiking, I would bring this pair with me in case I didn't end up going hiking, thankfully, but these are a pair of shoes that are very compact because they're uncaged. So I can literally just squish them together and shove them in my duffel bag or luggage. Of course, when I travel, I do bring a toiletry bag as well. And I don't think you guys really care what I bring with me, but I thought I'd show it anyway. So let's just unzip this and this is a nice little pouch from Herschel, not too expensive and I think it works perfectly in terms of carrying everything you need. So of course I got some Old Spice and I also just got this Philip razor because I clearly shouldn't have a beard or a mustache, it looks awful so I do use this quite often. Um, I, I like to use this instead of using the wet shave because my skin does get very irritated as you can tell so that is what I use. And in terms of cologne, um, I use Creed Aventus this is one that I really like and the normal package for a regular size Creed Aventus is like 500 bucks. So I kind of just like went on eBay and bought like a pack that was divided from the one liter size. So this was about $170 for 60 milliliters and that is what I use. Moving on, I got my toothpaste, which is the Colgate Optic White. And in terms of hair wax, the one I'm currently using right now is called Holland's Finest Ruzel. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it is the grease medium hold. And I essentially just put some wax on the front. I do get a haircut like every six days, but I just put a little bit on the front and otherwise the rest of my hair just kind of sticks up by itself. Last but not least, I have my electric toothbrush and I've had this one for a couple years now. And this is the Philips Sonicare. And this thing actually works very well. The battery life is great. And I use this every single day and I do like to bring it with me on travel. And it, this actually serves as a case for charging it as well but it does use mini USB. So I tend to just charge it before a trip and just take it with me and it seems to last the entire time. I'm also gonna show you guys some of the things that I bought in LA as well. It was one of those weekends where I landed, grabbed dinner, and the next morning I was at the event covering it. And on Sunday, I started filming very early at a breather space, the iPhone 10 review. 
Ran to Beverly Hills for a quick stop for shopping and also dinner. And Monday morning, I was up at three in the morning, had to fly back and go straight to financial accounting class. But I will say I had a great time and would totally do it again. So when it comes to what I bought on this trip, I really didn't pick up that much when I went to ComplexCon. The lines were just really, really long. I didn't have a VIP pass, so everything was like a one to two hour line, at least for things that people actually wanted. So the only thing I actually picked up was this Bait Bear Bricks, which is gold and I think it looks pretty cool and I kind of just wanted to get it as a piece of decor for the apartment and I thought the box was pretty nice as well but I was literally in line for this thing for like an hour and a half and I'm just not the most patient person so I didn't line up for anything else. I think there were some other things such as Revenge X Storm shoes that people were lining up for, also the raffle for the NERD NMDs which were reselling for like $8,000 which is crazy but I picked this up for myself and the other thing I picked up was for my mom's birthday. So I went to LA at the start of November. You guys are watching this now at the end of November or early December, but today is actually my mom's birthday. So when I was in LA at the start of the month, I decided to get my mom a birthday present. And I think I got to like Rodeo Drive at like 4.59 and Goyard was closing at five. So I literally ran around trying to figure out where it was. And I ended up getting my mom the purse that she has shown me in the past for her birthday. I don't really know much about it. I do like Goyard stuff a lot. You guys know that I do have a couple card holders and I'm just a pretty big fan of the company in general, but I ended up getting um, this purse for my mom, which is I think the one that she wanted uh, in the black and the brown strap. So I'll be giving this to her later today and I may or may not record the reaction for that. But this is essentially what I picked up in LA. I got a bear brick for myself in the bait gold and also a Goyard purse for my mom. But otherwise, I kind of just took it easy this trip. Otherwise, this has pretty much been a look at what I brought to LA with me as a carry-on. And make sure you let me know down in the comments section below if you guys like to see me do this more often for each trip because the gear line really does change. Sometimes I just bring a camera for photos. Sometimes I bring the video camera and camera gear as well. But otherwise, this video has gone on quite long, but I had a lot of fun making it, even though it was quite delayed because of some of the items being stolen. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.